So at this point, I'd imagine most of you guys have finished Jedi Survivor, and if you've clicked on the video, I'm going to assume that is the case, because obviously this is a spoiler-filled video. I'm going to be talking about all of the main path bosses in the game, and if you haven't finished the story, I would recommend clicking off the video right now, because there's going to be some big spoilers in here. And today, I'm going to be going through and ranking every single main path boss in the game. Now, before we go any further, I have to give a big thank you to both Logitech and Astro for sending me this headset. These are the Astro A30s, and as you can see, they are Mandalorian-inspired. As you can see, on one side, we have an actual little picture of Mando there and then on the other side we have the Mudhorn. They are really high quality headset. I've actually got the A50s which is like the I guess the step up to these ones in terms of the quality. I've been wearing these for I want to say five years now so I can't tell you how high quality Astro headsets are in my opinion they are the best headsets on the entire market and if you're looking for a new headset I would definitely recommend getting these so be sure to check out the link in the description and once again a big thank you to Logitech and Astro for sending me out the headset but with that being said let's get stuck into the video so as you can see we have got all of the main path bosses down here um, probably going to try and go through these in I guess chronological order or in the order that you've you know, face them in the game. Uh, just as a refresher, I'll show some gameplay in the background just so you can remember the boss fight that I'm talking about. Now, like I said, I'm ranking these based on essentially how much I enjoyed them, not just how difficult or easy they were. So be sure to keep that in mind. Now, starting off the first boss fight in the game was the Ninth Sister. Now, I did enjoy this boss fight. It was kind of cool to see her back. I called this like years ago, pretty much that she was not dead. I think most people did. There's no chance she just fell off a tree and died. So I think it was always, you know, the case that she was going to come back i do think it was a cool boss fight and i think it was cool the way that she did like the the minor reading trick and stuff like that but for me it probably goes down into the c tier it was a cool boss fight none of the boss fights in this game were bad in my opinion so even a d on this list is not even a bad thing but for me this is probably one of the the lower boss fights in the game just because it was early on it was pretty easy and so this one goes in the c tier for me now the next boss fight that we had was the first dagon gera boss fight this one is one where he pretty much comes straight out of the back to tank for me this was a very cool boss fight and i think it was cool to sort of initially meet this character it did seem a little weird at the time how quickly he turned from being a jedi to essentially he, you wouldn't call him a sith but he was obviously evil so at the time that was a little jarring but as the story progresses you kind of see why that happens for me i think once again this probably goes in the c tier but it does go above the ninth sister fight it was a cool boss fight it wasn't anything crazy but obviously that's just the introduction to the character so it was never going to be that crazy anyway but overall still a cool boss fight in my opinion now, next on the list was actually a random one that I didn't realize was actually a main path boss, but it was. You had to actually beat this boss to get through the story. This one is the Scritten, which is the like scorpion looking things on Jeddah. For me, this one goes in the D category, not because it was bad. It was just comparing it to the rest of these. These are all like real characters or I guess people, humanoid type characters. This one being a creature, it was a little bit underwhelming compared to the rest, but it was still fun and it was definitely not easy. The first time because you've got to learn how they you know how they attack and how they defend so probably the lowest one on this list for me personally but i still did enjoy it that one goes in the d category now next up we had the marauder which is like one of ravis's raiders essentially called i think tag loosh this one was the one that was in the like courtyard of dagon Gera's like i don't know palace i don't know what you would really call that place but this is one that prior to the game we we're all wondering who's this character with a dual wield blue saber it was kind of weird it was a cool little reveal um for me this one actually goes in the b category it was a very easy boss fight but i think the the fact that you fight in like the courtyard and some of the attacks that this guy does where he actually turns his saber off so that it looks like he's going to attack and then he actually just turns his saber off i thought it was actually really cool and just the fact that we see like a double blade blue lightsaber on a villain i thought that was actually pretty cool so pretty easy boss fight it wasn't anything spectacular but i actually really enjoyed this one and i think it's one of the cooler like boss arenas in the game as well now the next one was once again one of ravis's raiders i forget the name of this guy i think it was possibly dryer thorn but i could be wrong there this is the one that in the trailers we saw him with cal's saber and it was like the cross guard saber and it was yellow obviously he looked a little bit different in the game and he has his own saber that was obviously just like a placeholder but we did see this in the trailer nonetheless now for me this one probably goes down here it was cool but it was a little bit underwhelming because it had been in so many trailers and then it wasn't actually that cool of a boss fight because there was a lot of mystery around this character and then it turns out he was just another one of the raiders that we had just seen like an hour before in the game so once again not a bad boss fight and the fact that he goes invisible was definitely a little bit of a cool edge to it but for me still definitely one of the more like underwhelming at least on this list anyway now next up we had ravis who in my opinion is probably one of the cooler bosses on this entire list and for me i think this one actually goes into the a tier and depending on how the rest of these fit 
He may actually go to the S tier as well. I actually really, really love this boss fight. I think Ravis is a very cool character and it had a pretty cool ending to this one as well. Not only that, but just the actual arena that you're fighting and kind of the, I guess, stakes of that fight and just the build up to it. It felt like it was building through this fight for quite a while. He has a really cool move set and he was very powerful. I struggled quite a bit with him actually. And so, yeah, for me, I think he goes in the A tier and potentially the S tier. We're going to shuffle this around a little bit at the end, but as of right now, he definitely goes in the A tier. Now, next on the list, we actually had the second Dagger boss fight. Yeah, I just got that wrong. It turns out the Dag and Gera boss fight that I'm about to talk about, the second one was actually before Ravis, so I've got the order there wrong, but it doesn't really matter. This is the one on the Luka Hulk, and this takes place about half an hour or an hour before you actually get to Ravis. For me, I think this one goes on the B tier and probably behind the Marauder, actually, surprisingly. It was a cool boss fight, but it wasn't anything spectacular, and I think because he has three, the other ones don't feel as you know, exciting as the final one. So for me, it probably goes in the B tier. It was still a cool boss fight, but definitely not on the level of Ravis and even probably it's less, I guess, memorable than this Marauder. So it's kind of weird that a main, you know, he's one of the main characters of the game. He's less cool than a Marauder, but that's just how I rank it anyway. Yeah, after that, we did obviously fight Ravis. Like I said, I got the order there wrong, but then we do fight Dag and Garrett once again. And for me, this one definitely goes around the same area as Ravis. I'm not really sure where to put this, but I think I'm gonna put it just behind the Ravis boss fight. This one was really cool with like the sort of force hallucinations that he has and he, the, the moment where he flips you onto the roof and then he sort of turns himself upside down and walks on the roof as well. I think that was really, really cool. This one is definitely a very memorable boss fight and it took me quite a while, I won't lie. So it was pretty difficult. It had a cool little arena and I think the stakes were pretty high in this one too. As well as the fact that when you kill him, it was kind of confusing because I thought he was the main boss. So I was like, surely the game isn't done yet and it adds a little bit of mystery to it so yeah i definitely very much enjoyed this boss fight just like the ravis one it could end up in the s tier or we'll just have to wait and see we'll mess around with that at the end like i said now next up we had the bad man himself darth vader and for me this one instantly goes into the s tier now whether it is number one i'm not 100 sure just yet but obviously being vader it's always going to be a, an absolute spectacle seeing him in the game and I do think the boss fight, it wasn't just because it was Vader. I think the boss fight itself was actually really cool. The fact that you fight in the archive, the fact that you're playing as Sia at that moment in time. And just, I guess, just the spectacle of that fight in terms of crashing down the archive on top of him. He's on fire and stuff. The fact that he kills Sia at the end, it's, it's a very memorable boss fight. It's probably one of the more memorable moments in the game for me personally. So for me, this one definitely goes in the S tier. And I think as of right now, it's probably the number one boss fight, but we will have to wait and see. But he's definitely leading the charge as of right now. Now, chronologically, next, we actually had Rick, the door technician. I'm going to leave him till last because, let's be honest, he's the GOAT. The next one after that, though, was Bo Dacuna, the one where he actually reveals himself as essentially like an evil character, a force user. The actual boss fight itself, I won't lie, probably goes here simply because it wasn't actually much of a boss fight. It was more of like a story element where it just gets revealed and then it was pretty much scripted. Like you just can't win that boss fight. So the boss fight itself wasn't anything special, but I think in terms of the story, it was one of the most crazy moments in the entire game. The moment when he force pushes you and you, uh, at least for me, I don't know what you guys were like. I fully was just sat there like, what the hell is going on right now? I kind of had a feeling he would turn, but I didn't know he would be force sensitive. That part was completely unexpected. So yeah, the actual boss fight itself, it wasn't that memorable. I nearly forgot to actually include this in there, but that moment was probably one of the more pivotal moments in the entire game for sure. Now, as for the final boss fight against Bode, this one probably goes right here. I think it's in between and looking at this now, I think I will move the Ravis fight up to the S tier as well. So I'd say the final boss for me was the third best in the game. It was definitely on the harder side and it was a cool little arena, especially the fact that you kind of had two little arenas. You fight at that little top section and then you use Merrin's Magicka to actually sort of like go down to that bottom section, as well as the fact that you like have to use the dark side to actually beat Bode. I think that was really cool. Definitely still one of the more memorable moments in the entire game for me. It's not quite on the level of these two. However, in saying that now, I'm actually half tempted to put it up here but i think i'll leave it there i think it's not quite s tier i think it was very very good but i think bode as a character wasn't at least as a villain i think as a character he's a really good character but as a villain i don't think he was as menacing as ravis or vader so i don't think it quite deserves to be in the s tier but very very close nonetheless so yeah for me that one is definitely at least at this moment sitting in third place now as for rick the door technician in all seriousness though this one actually for me legitimately goes in the a tier I know that sounds incredibly dumb to a lot of people, but the genuine laughter this gave me where if you guys can remember the sequence before that and look at the gameplay that I'm showing you right now, I had literally one health 
I've just been through hell to actually get through that first section before this. Then I see a big boss bar at the top of the screen and I'm going, oh no, I can't, I just can't survive this. And then I see that it's a freaking stormtrooper or a scout trooper called Rick and I literally one hit him. So I fully lost the plot when this happened. And for me, it is probably one of the more memorable moments in the game just because it was genuinely funny. It's also, as far as I'm aware, a nod to Elden Ring. There is a character in that game or a mini boss called Rick, Soldier of God. There was another boss in the game called Godric and this was, it was just like a little meme within Elden Ring. I'm pretty sure that's a nod to that. I could be completely wrong, but just the fact that they're both called Rick and they're both absolute bots, I think it is a nod to Elden Ring, which is one of my favorite games of all time. So this one probably seems dumb, have it so high up there but I genuinely did laugh at this and it was kind of a relief after the absolute hell I had just been through to get to that phase to just literally one shot this enemy it was it was hilarious let's be honest so I think that right there is my official ranking of all of the boss fights in Jedi Survivor these are obviously just the main bosses like I said if you do want me to continue doing like ranking type videos be sure to let me know down in the comments because I can always do like all of the side bosses all of the main bosses and side bosses in one whole video and plenty of other rankings as well so be sure to let me know down in the comment section with that being said though guys thank you all very much for watching you guys have a great day and may the force be with you always